This video is about using for loops for repeating things in R. Loops are one of the fundamental structures for performing repetition in programming. And for loops work by performing the same action for each item in a list of items, like a vector. And the general concept uh, behind this works uh, with some pseudocode here is the keyword for parentheses to include the information about the looping and that will look like item which is going to be a variable that we can use inside the function in list of items and this will be the vector or other list of things that we're looping over We'll then define curly brackets, like we've been doing a lot recently, to indicate what is included inside the for loop. And then uh, we can do something, typically using this variable that we're uh, looping over. And so the basic idea here is that for each trip through the loop, uh, the first value from this list of items will get assigned to item, the variable item, and then down in the body of the for loop we'll do some calculations using that variable item. Once that first trip through the loop is done, we'll come back to the beginning of the loop, we'll take the second value out of list of items, assign it to the variable item, and then run this code again, which will now do calculations on the second value. And we keep doing that until we've done the same thing for every value in list of items. To see an example of this, let's calculate the masses uh, for some shrubs from their volumes, like we've been doing uh, the last few weeks. But this time we'll do it using a loop. And so first we need to create the vector that we're going to loop over. And so we'll call that volumes. And we'll set it equal to a vector with the numbers 1.6, uh, 3, and 8 in it. And now we can write our for loop. And so we'll say for volume, and we can call this variable anything we want. If we're looping in the way that we're doing it right now, it's good to call it something that we know what it is. And so give it a good descriptive name, like lots of other things that we use. And so I'll call it volume in and now our list of items is this volumes vector. And so this basically says for each volume in volumes, curly brackets, do the stuff that's inside the curly brackets. And so we can go ahead and calculate our mass. And so we'll say mass is equal to assign the value of 2.65 times volume raised to the 0 0.9. And then we're going to print that value out just so that we can see what's happening. And so we'll print mass. One thing to note is that inside of for loops and uh, functions as well. If we want to actually display something to the screen, we have to explicitly use a print statement. Uh, so even if I'd just typed this, it wouldn't have printed out. We would have needed to, to include it in a print statement. So let's go ahead and run this loop and see what happens. What we see is that we get three values printed out. And this is how uh, the code operates. The first time through the for loop, when we start on line 6, it takes the first value out of volumes, that's 1.6, assigns it to the variable volume. 
Then down in here, it uses that variable to do this calculation, stores it in the variable mass, and then prints it out. Once it's completed that first trip through the loop, then it goes back to the beginning. It takes the second value out of volumes, so three in this case, assigns it to the variable volume. Then it uses that value to do this calculation for mass and prints out the result. And we see it's about twice as big. Then it finishes, comes back to the beginning, takes the third value out of volumes, assigns it to volume, and then does the calculation and prints out the result. And we get it down here. And then it know, it checks to see if there are any values left in volumes, and there aren't, and so the loop finishes. And then it goes on to do any additional code execution that happens below it. So in other words, this code right here is exactly the same as writing this out the long way, saying volume is the first value from the volumes vector, and then mass is volume uh, 2.65 times volume raised to the 0 0.9, and then print mass. And then volume is equal to volume's second value, mass is 2.65 times volume raised to the 0 0.95 print mass. And then volume is equal to the third value in volumes. Mass is 2.65 times volume to the 0 0.95 print mass. And many of you probably have uh, code that looks kind of like this somewhere where you've done the same thing over and over again. Uh, and most of the code is just copy and pasted. And this is a good sign that there's a useful way to make your code simpler and easier to understand. Uh, and one of those ways is using a for loop. Like with functions, we can have as many lines as we want in these curly brackets. We've seen this already. Uh, with these two lines, but we could expand our function further. Uh, for example, if we wanted to uh, convert this mass from kilograms to pounds before printing it out, uh, we could add a line that said mass in pounds is going to be equal to our mass times 2.2, because that's the conversion uh, for kilograms to pounds. And then we could run this larger for loop uh, making sure to print out the mass in pounds. And we'll see that we get these different results. So that's the basic idea behind for loops. They loop over a set of items in a list of items and run the same code uh, for each of those items one at a time. They do this by assigning each value from that list to a specific variable name, and then that variable gets used in the code. Uh, and they have this basic structure of for item in the list of items that's surrounded in parentheses, curly brackets, and then the code that we want to execute, often using this variable. All right, how's the recording going this morning? And can I use my hair to point to things? Let's see. Uh, over here, we could click on the uh, new folder button. And uh, then if we need to uh, delete something, we can click on the delete. And uh, we can rename or hit more for additional options.